how Italy destroyed Turkey in the opening game of Euro 2020. So this video will be a briefer analysis compared to what I usually do and that's just because over Euro 2020 I want to be getting out more videos so I'm going to not go into as much depth in terms of the tactical side but I'll still be covering the major features of each game, where each side went right and where they went wrong, also analysing individual performances as well. So if you want to see more of that over Euro 2020 make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified when my videos come out. I'll be aiming for at least one, probably two or even three videos a day if I can so uh, any likes or sharing will definitely help me but before I do get into the analysis let me tell you about my favorite football app which is the one football app because this app is what I use to keep up to date with the latest circulating transfer rumors and I find the match section on the app incredibly useful as well for looking at matches clubs and players that I'm not able to watch on a regular basis if you like this channel you'll definitely love this app so when you go to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content which would be very much appreciated make sure you click the link in the description to get the one football app as well so going into the game Turkey set up their side in a 4-2-3-1 and they were uh, content to defend narrow and in that still 4-2-3-1 uh, shape covering the middle and forcing Italy out to the flanks. Now what Italy did, um, their 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 shape, what happened with that is they became a kind of 3-2-4-1 shape in possession where Florenzi would sit a lot deeper than um, Spinazzola on the left. So Spinazzola would push right up the flank, playing more as a left, a left a wing back at times with Florenzi holding a deeper position, creating a back three. And you would have... Um, uh, Jorginho as a deep single pivot in midfield and Locatelli would, pro would sometimes move alongside him uh, which would create a double pivot at times and what you'd see is, is Barella on the right would push higher up in behind the Turkey uh, midfield looking to get into the half space and Insigne from that left side because Spinozola was overlapping him he he he's um his width was covered and he was able to move into the half spaces. So what actually happened was Italy created sort of a box midfield with Barella and Insigne in the half space with Locatelli and Jorginho sitting in that deeper double pivot. And Berardi on the right side of the attack would hold his width a lot more than this Insigne on the left side with Churo Immobile up front. Now from the start of the game it seemed like um, Italy were a more the more possession oriented side and that was definitely ca the, the case throughout the match. Um, Italy controlled possession and throughout the game they seemed to be pushing Turkey further and further back. Turkey originally looked to be um, pressing as soon as Italy moved into their middle third but as Italy um, dominated possession, um, especially with the back three, what happened was with the back three, um, Turkey's narrow 4-2-3-1 um, left spaces uh, down the channels so what would happen often is Italy would uh, move the ball to Chiellini and he would dribble the ball forward and that acted as a good way of progressing the ball into Turkey's half which subsequently forced Turkey's midfield to completely collapse far too early and at times Turkey was sort of playing in the back six even in the first half and whilst this did sort of cover spaces along the back line it just allowed um Italy to sustain the pressure within Turkey's defensive third. This is very similar to what we saw Jose Mourinho's Tottenham fall into last season. Basically what happens is a side gets over cautious and we see the it generally happens with the wide midfielders they tend to drop deep following the fullbacks far too deep and this just leaves space either side of the central midfielders where the uh, wide midfielders have dropped too deep and this just allows the opposition side to progress the ball into the defensive third and once you're in the defensive third it's quite hard to get out of and we did see that with Turkey Yilmaz was completely isolated throughout the game he was basically up front on his own the ball would go into him and it would be easy for Italy to sort of pressure him and win the ball back. And that was Turkey's major flaw throughout this game. They didn't press high enough until right at the end of the game, which was basically too late. But what they should have done is confronted Italy higher up the pitch. They didn't do that. And so Italy were pretty um, comfortable in controlling possession. And they were able to create that box midfield, which was causing Turkey problems, particularly because Insigne was in a half space. And this meant that um, Selic, the right back, would constantly have to push out of the back line to um, pressurise Insigne and stop him picking up the ball in the half space and this would leave a gap and often what we saw I think it was around the 17th minute we saw Insigne get into that space when Selic pushed out and uh, create a chance from that but in the first half Italy didn't really create major chances but it seemed like the writing was on the cards and it was sort of up to Turkey to sort of change the game pattern which they didn't do in the second half but credit to Mancini he made an early change he saw that um, Turkey was sitting back very deep so what he did is he brought in Di Lorenzo who's a much better attacking fullback than Florenzi is and he gave him more license to push forward which gave Italy more width in, their, in the uh, possession system 
and really allowed them to stretch Turkey and um, progress the ball more uh, down the right side. Whereas on the on the in the first half, a lot of their attacks were coming down the left side through Chiellini and Spinazzola. So this change from Mancini um, really allowed Italy to balance out how their attacks were funneling. Um, forward, they were funneling the attacks down the right and the left in the second half, whereas in the first half it was majorly down the left side. Um, so that was um, a key point that I mentioned in my predictions video. Um, having a manager who's uh, got tactical nous and can make those big changes throughout the game is going to really set different teams apart. Uh, managers who sit on their laurels and they sort of stick to the system they went with um, to around the 70th minute, say, are really going to struggle to change games. They're going to rely on personnel to do this. Whereas a manager like Mancini, you can quickly change personnel, change the way a system is functioning, is going to be more adaptable and therefore they're going to win games like this as Italy showed in the second half. But Italy did get the breakthrough at the start of the second half and it did come from that box midfield that I spoke about earlier on. Uh, we saw that uh, here Locatelli and Jorginho are sitting quite deep, playing almost as a double pivot instead of like a usual midfield three as you'd usually see in a 4-3-3. But Barella on the right side is pushed high up the pitch. He's in behind the Turkey midfield in that half space. And Locatelli, who I'm a massive fan of, did excellently to see that incisive pass. If you actually look at his stats on FB Ref, I think he's created the most, um, or he's played the most passes into the final third of any player in Europe. And this is another classic example of his ability. He gets a ball, sees Barilla in that space and plays a wonderful curling pass around the Turkey midfield, which not, not a lot of players would be able to do. They would normally look to just circulate the ball. But this incisive pass is what really creates a goal. Barilla receives a ball in the half space. He um, rightly plays the ball out to Berardi. And from then on, Turkey, um, it's just sort of a lapse of con concentration. The left back slips. The ball across hits uh, Demiral and he can't really do much about it and it goes in the net. But this goal was re really came from Barella's position in the box midfield I spoke about. And Turkey's lack of real adjustment to this box midfield, you'd expect maybe them to drop um, the deeper midfielder of the three slightly deeper than he was for this goal, just to cut off that pass. But Turkey didn't do that, they didn't adapt at all. And um, Italy were able to take advantage of that. The second goal as well came from Barella, exploiting that space in behind Turkey's midfield. For a team defending so deep, Turkey really didn't keep... Their, mid, their whole system vertically compact. Their midfield seemed to have no organisation at all. And this is something we do see, see from international tournaments. Because sides don't have the time to work on this system, it does become sort of disjointed a lot more than we see in club football. With Mourinho, for example, even though Tottenham were sitting deep, we would often see Hoiberg and Sissoko, whoever was playing in that double pivot, really deep, um, c compressing that space between the midfield and defence. Turkey weren't doing that at all. So Barilla for the second goal, um, he gets in the space and Signe finds him. He has so much space in midfield. And from this attack, Spinozola's shot is saved and uh, Immobile, like the poacher he is, Finishes the chance very well. He reads that the ball might come back off the keeper. He's the first to anticipate it, which is what any good striker will do. And he has a composure to slot the ball into the net. And um, I think Immobile sort of confirmed what I said in my predictions video, that he is an underdog behind Lukaku and Kane for that golden boot. And um, I don't think you could back against him at the moment. The third goal came from Italy actually continuing to press high, which was actually a feature of their game I really liked. Most teams would have sat off and, uh, and would have been content with a 1-0 or a 2-0. But Italy seemed committed to their system that they were they were going out with and they continued to press high. And this is where the third goal came from. The ball from the keeper is intercepted by Berardi, goes into Immobile and he finds Insigne who slots the ball into the bottom corner perfectly. And I think this is a good sign if you're looking to back a team to win the Euros because what will happen with most sides is they'll, they'll go 1-0 up and they'll uh, completely... Um, go, go away from their original game plan. They'll fall back, um, invite pressure in an attempt to sort of protect that lead. And all that does is it gives the opposition the chance to move the ball into your half. But with Italy, what they did is they carried on with their system that was working so well and they killed off the game. Um, if they had set, sat back and been content with a 1-0 victory, we would have seen a nervy 10 minutes. And maybe what happens, especially in the knockout stages, what you can see is if it goes into the last 10 minutes um, of a knockout game, um, pressure builds and you can see signs nicking a uh, goal that will take it into extra time. So I think the fact that Italy were continuing to play the same way they were, the same aggressive way, is um, a very good signal to how they're going to play throughout the tournament. Um, but for Turkey, um, 
it just seems that the, their manager had a lack of adaptability in this game. You could see from the first half what the problem was. You would have expected maybe a change in the pressing system to stop Italy advancing into their half as easily. That didn't happen, which is very concerning. I still back them to get out of the group, as I said in my predictions video, but... I think they've been overhyped as dark horses. I think a lot of it does come down to the manager. Uh, I don't think people look at that enough. They look at the individual players instead of really analysing how the team plays as a whole. Because I do think that's more important. And with Mancini, Italy have got probably one of the best, if not the best manager uh, manager in the whole tournament, along with maybe Luis Enrique and uh, someone else I'm probably forgetting. But I think this does really cement Italy as one of the favourites to win the tournament, in my opinion. In terms of individual players, Italy had a lot of standout players. Um, but before I go into that, uh, Turkey, I just thought their midfield was really dysfunctional. I thought um, Yasuku, the deeper line central midfielder, and Tufan, they constantly giving the ball away. And this was the main problem for Turkey. They couldn't work the ball into Italy's defensive third because of the lack of incisive passes in the lack of incisive passes in their midfield, which is a major problem. And I think it will be a problem for a lot of midfields because it's not built on a transfer strategy where a side can bring in a deeper line playmaker or a ball winner if they need it. They sort of give them what they're given. And I think this is what a lot of sides are going to have to deal with. But Italy's midfield is perfectly balanced. They've got Jorginho, who's an excellent progressor of the ball. We saw this a lot in this game. He would get the ball and constantly be looking forward to play that forward pass, especially for Spinazzola. He was excellent down that left side. I really like this Italian system. Barella and Locatelli, uh, the way Mancini's got his set up is, is perfect for this sort of game where the opposition's midfield is completely disjointed because it allows Barella to get in that half space. Locatelli can sit deep, play the role of a deeper line playmaker. And then you've got Insigne as well, moving in field into that left-sided half space, created, creating the box midfield I've been talking about. So I think it's a, the, before, I did fancy them before the competition to have a good um, have a good tournament. But I think this has really cemented it in my mind that they could be the dark horses of the whole tournament. You can see where I think, where I thought they would finish before this game. If you check out my predictions video, which should be out, it should be the video out before this. So go check that out. Also remember to subscribe to the channel as I will be doing this sort of review for every game, hopefully. And turn on notifications so you get notified when those videos come out. Give the video a like. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more, more content as well. And put your thoughts on the game in the comments section below as well.